What is good, everybody? Welcome to another Gold Standard Podcast. You know me, Rob Stats Guerrera and Levin Black. And now we're joined by a very special guest, former 49ers tight end, Super Bowl champion, actor, entrepreneur, philanthropist. Did I leave anything out, Vernon? No, you didn't. Which one of those titles do you like the best? Uh, you know what? I like uh, I like philanthropist. Okay, I would have taken Super Bowl champ, but that's fine. I know you're here on behalf of Abbott and a soccer clinic that you just took part in. We're going to get to that in a second. But I have a ton of questions for you because I feel like you are you've had an experience that a lot of 49ers or all the 49ers right now have. And that is, unfortunately, losing a Super Bowl and having to come back the next year. So what is that like? What was it like for you as a player when you lose the Super Bowl, you get so close and then you have to climb the mountain the following year? Yeah, I think it's uh it's one of those things that, that leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. Uh, because you make it so far, you've worked so hard, you accomplish accomplished so much to make it to that point. And then when you can't pull it off, it's like it's like, wow, this is uh this is tough. I mean, we don't know when you don't know when you're you're going to ever make it back there again. I mean, I played with guys who played 14, 15 years and never even made it to the playoffs. So it's one of those making it to the Super Bowl is few and far between. So you have to really make sure you can capitalize on it when you make it there. Now, how important is it for them to get a good start to the season? You know, do you think like doubt creeps in if you start out 0 and 1, 0 and 2? Is it important or does that not really matter? So you want to think of it like a relay race. You want to start off nice. You want to start off good, get a good lead, and then keep the pace going. And then when you get to the end, your anchor you want to take it on home with uh, giving it all he got. So I mean, if you, it's it's very important to start off start off uh, as strong as you possibly could. Uh, if you don't, you're going to be playing catch up because there are some. There's a lot of good teams in the league, as we all know. The professional level is the best level you, the greatest level you could possibly be. So uh, getting a good start is always uh, a good thing. Certainly, they'd get off to a hell of a lot better start if they had Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk under contract and participating. How big of a deal is that? How big of a distraction is that for other guys who are there, who are on the team, going through practice every day? Is it a big distraction or is it something that you just put out of your mind? I think it's something you put out of your mind. When you have guys who are in contract negotiations, you don't, you hope for the best, prepare for the worst. You have to, you do understand that this is a business. And, and that's one of the things that can really break it, separate, well, break a team up uh, is not bringing those key guys back. And we're talking to a guy like Trent Williams, who's one of the team's ca team captains and one of the greatest players to play in the league. Um, you want to try to sign that guy. You know, he's a, he's a huge asset to the team but yeah i don't think it's a distraction i think it's one of those things you just put in the back of your mind and just do what you have to do because individually you still have to make sure that you prepare to the best of your ability so that you can be um uh an integral piece to the team because you you do i mean you you do have to perform does it matter between holding in and holding out i know that's kind of a newer thing but is it not weird to have a a player like Brandon Ayuk, who's holding in, he's in team meetings, but then there's all this trade talk around him to where you don't even know if he's going to be on the team come the season. Yeah, it could it could present a challenge not knowing what was showing up, being around the team, and and then having a, a lot of gossip behind whether you're going to be there or not. I think it, it it could be tough, but as a player, I know that my agent is going to work it out. He's going to get everything the way it needs to be, and. I, as a as a person, you just stay the person that you've always been. You know, whether you're with the team or not, you still have to have to do everything that the rest of the team um, will be doing. Every every activity, every practice, you just go out and you just do what you got to do. What I worry about Vernon is like how this changes how the other guys feel about the team. For example, like hey, somebody's gonna text Brandon Ayuk, hey. B.A., what's going on? Like, what are they saying to you? And he's going to tell that person probably like, hey, they've said X, Y, and Z. We want X, Y, and Z. And I feel like it could sour the other guys on the team and their feelings toward the organization. Well, I mean, it, it can. I mean, you have some guy. It can and it can. I mean, it's just it's one of those things. It's like. Um, that's his business. That's my teammates' business. I'm I'm praying for him. I'm hoping for the best for this guy. And I'm I'm 
I'm rooting for him to come back on this team. You know what I mean? But I, I do understand that it is a business at the end, of the end of the day. We have to make sure that we can afford this guy. And that's how we have to look at it. I think I didn't start thinking that way until later on until I got towards the end of my career. But uh, it, it it's, it's one of those things. You just have to let that guy worry about his own his own stuff because, I mean, you this is a it's an honor and a privilege to be able to be playing on any NFL team. I don't have to be here. Let's change it up and go to George Kittle. I know you've talked a lot about him being two form uh, two great 49ers tight ends. I'm curious, as he enters his 30s now, does blocking affect your ability to be a receiving threat? Is that something that you wanted to do less when you got older because it you needed to kind of conserve your energy to be the receiving option, or did that have an effect at all? No, I mean, I think I, I mean as a tight end, you never really want to block. I mean, that's not <laughs> that's not that's not why you found up to play that position, right? My my main thing when I was playing, I just wanted to score touchdowns and catch passes. That's all I wanted to do. If coach was leaving me, I remember I remember when we had Mike Martz, he left me in probably sixty to seventy percent of the time, pass protected. So I I thought it was the worst thing in the world. But I think as a complete player, which I was, which I was told by Coach Mike Singletary, just being a complete player means that you have to you have to be able to block, you have to be able to pass protect and catch passes. You dominate on all three phases, and and I think that's what you do as a as a player. I mean, anything the coaches ask of you, you go out and you get it done. That's the mindset you need to have as a tight end. As far as conserving your body, I mean, I I don't really think that comes into play when it comes to um, being an effective uh, blocker or, or pass catcher. You just you just do what you got to do, whether whether you have to utilize your body or not. This is neither here nor there, but like scale of one to ten. When Mike Martz is keeping you in to pass block all those signs, like what was your level of frustration? How did you not go into his office and just be like, dude, let me run. Let me catch the damn ball. Oh, I did. You missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you you guys didn't hear about that. You didn't hear about that. I kept that quiet. But so what, uh, did, what did he say to you when you would say these things to him? You know, he has that quiet voice. It's like you'll get your chance. You'll get your chances. You, 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 you. I'll make sure I get you out. And, and but, but you just do your job. You do your job. That's that's how he, that's how he talks. Very. He's like a serial killer, man. It's very quiet, quiet voice. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It, it, I just you know I did whatever he told me to do. I I tr- I had to trust the process and know that hey my my opportunities are going to come and just do what he do what the coach tells me to do. I, I can't think of a single great tight end that played with Mike Martz. He was much more the receiver and the running back guy. So that makes a lot of sense that he kept you in. And maybe that's why I did. Want to, Greg Olson too. That That's true. I'd forgotten about that one. Uh, I did want to ask your thoughts on Brock Purdy. You know, the, the narrative with Brock keeps changing. Some people are a little more uh, positive this going into this season than prior to last season. But as you watch Brock Purdy, what do you see in him as a quarterback, and where do you rate him amongst the quarterbacks? I think um, I think Brock Purdy is pretty. Brock Purdy is pretty. Yeah, he's a pretty guy. Of course, he's pretty. But uh, no, I think I, he's one of the best. He's one of the best in the league. He's definitely in the top top three in my in my opinion. Uh, he has everything that it takes to be a winning quarterback. He's very poised in the pocket. He can run. He can, he can scramble. He he has great instincts and a great arm. He has he has a lot of ability of some of our past uh, quarterbacks. Uh, I think he's just a tremendous talent. And but the only way for me to con- to really have faith in Brock Purdy and know that he's he is who we see him to be is consistency, and that comes over time. He has to go out there and continue to be that example of what it takes to be a winning quarterback. And I think we're going to see that over the next two, three years. Now, you recently took part in a soccer clinic that Abbott and Real Madrid uh, Football Club hosted for pro athletes. Tell me about that. What was it like for you? Uh, and was it weird maybe not being the best athlete on the field for the first time in your life? Uh, no, I felt like I was the greatest, best athlete out there. What are you talking about? We had Justin <laughs> Tuck out there and Torrey Holt. They couldn't top me. They couldn't touch me. Come on. <laughs> So, but no, I, it felt uh, it felt really it felt really good being out there and just doing something that I normally wouldn't do. 
but it took me back to my childhood days when I did play. Because in grade school, I played soccer. It was one of the first sports I actually went out and, and played. Of course, I didn't have my shin guards when I was out there, but I did have them during grade school. So um, I started to think about those days, you know, when my grandmother first took me to the store to buy my shin guards and uh, all my other pads that I needed, my cleats. But it, it, it really, it really felt good um, to do something that I wouldn't normally do and to be amongst some of the great players and and some amazing celebrities that they had out there. But it was it was awesome. Those different clinics, some of the workouts that they put us through, and and not to mention, oh my goodness, the most important thing to me is recovery. And they had everything: thirty grams of Ensure Max Protein um, was clutch. Because I was trying to figure it out, I was like, okay, I don't see the food, I see the fruit, but how am I going to recover? Because I'm going, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to put everything I got into scoring these goals. You, you know what I mean? When you're running and you're and you're and you're going this way lateral, and you know it takes a lot. Of that you have you have to exert a lot of energy, and it requires a great deal of uh, recovery when you're done. So, you know, I'm I'm really uh, elated that they had they they took care of us and had that uh, short protein. One more question for you, Vernon, before we let you go. Did you happen to see any of the Tua Tungavailoa stuff about Brian Flores and, and what he said about how Brian Flores coached him when he was there? You know what? I, a little bit. Uh, um, I saw a little bit of it. I, I didn't really get into detail on that. But why why why'd you ask me that? Are you trying to compare my compare some of the experiences I had with that? Well, yeah, yeah, that was my thought because clearly it was a toxic situation with Brian Flores and Tua. And you obviously were part of a very famous coach player interaction with Mike Singletary, where he kicked you off yeah. the field and all of that. What is the difference between what Brian Flores did to Tua and what Mike Singletary did to you? Well, this I well, well I don't know. I it's hard to say. I mean, I would I would need the complete details. I mean, it's it's always he uh his hers and the truth right we we heard that we've heard that many times and you know i i would just need the complete details of like their 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 interactions their um experiences together and things of that nature but i mean t coaching uh, you're going to get tough coaching back back when i was when i was playing from college all the way up through the pros it was it was a lot of tough love a lot of tough tough coaching and unfortunately a lot of a lot of it didn't come to the forefront from, from for a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys, some of the stuff get, just got cut, kept quiet, you know, but mine's happened to be uh, exposed on national television. Um, but uh, I learned from it. I learned from it. I thought, I thought it was great. You know, a lot of people thought I was a great person too, but they didn't know what I was struggling with mentally. Right. I can honestly, I can sit here now and say that that was the best moment for me because I had a lot to learn. You know, I wasn't that team player that I should have been. I wasn't the 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 leader that they brought me in to be. It took that experience with Coach Singletary for me to be able to open my eyes and say, hey, I need to actually get better at this. I need to, if I don't get my act together, then I'm going to be gone. They're going to let me go. So, yeah, it's like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of the details. We, I, I don't know too personally. I don't know uh, what he's been like in the locker room and, and things of that nature. I just know. Uh, what I see, what I hear. So it all depends. A lot goes into that. Well, Vernon Davis, thank you very much for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Abbott. Thank you, Insure Max Protein. We really appreciate a few minutes. You're welcome.